Chess friends, I hope you are doing well. Today, I have Wesley So, a Filipino and American chess grandmaster and three-time US chess champion, his peak rating is 2822, which is spectacular, making him the fifth highest rated player in history, I played against him and employed the king's gambit, so, stay tuned until the end of the video, I started the game with e4, and Wesley considered e5, we have e4 on the board, deploying the king's gambit, and here Wesley accepts the gambit. I wonder how a grandmaster can accept a gambit against stockfish, maybe they think they can win the game against stockfish by capturing a pawn in the opening, instead of playing all the unnatural moves in this gambit, you need to first consider knight to f3 to protect the e square from being invaded by the queen, therefore, after g5 was considered, play bishop to c4, gaining access to this diagonal, after g4 happened in the game that Wesley considered, here you can play the aggressive move, knight to e5. But this move is not so playable for white because now black can consider queen to h4, checking my king, after the king moves, here most players play a very bad move, which is g3, they think the pawn is pinned and can create some sort of tactic, but it is not a good move, the best move for black in this position would be to consider knight to c6, attacking the knight. Again, here as white, many players make mistakes by noticing that the g4 pawn is under attack by two pieces, but the best move would be to consider d4, if you dare to capture the pawn on g4, this will be very bad for you, as black can immediately punish you by playing d5, attacking both the bishop and the knight on g4 simultaneously. Going back to the reason, these approaches didn't happen in the game, in fact, I didn't play knight to e5, instead, I considered castling, giving up material in the opening, Wesley was very happy and smiled while capturing the knight, after queen takes f3 happened in the game, here black has main options to bring out his most powerful piece, when you accept any gambit or capture a piece, it's recommended to bring your most powerful piece into play and develop faster than your opponent, in this position. You can play c3 d4 as white, or you can play d4 immediately, not knight to c3, playing knight to c3 would be a very bad choice because after knight to c3, black can play queen to d4, checking the black king and attacking the bishop, therefore, in this position, the best move for white is actually to consider d3, protecting the bishop and supporting the center, from black's perspective, do you know what Wesley considers in this position? Wesley is a very tough chess player, he has defeated Magnus Carlsen more than 10 times, I consider him one of the luckiest chess grandmasters, as many players fear his power and strategies, often blundering and making mistakes. The move Wesley played is b5 because he sacrifices the pawn as a tempo to develop the bishop as soon as possible, as he is up material at the end. Therefore, we have bishop to d5, I'm not interested in your pawns, but rather in developing my pieces, and this is the chess opening strategy, you need to develop your pieces and gain tempo on the enemy's pieces, you can see that by playing e5, I gain another tempo, capturing the pawn on e5 would be a very bad choice, as I can then sacrifice my second piece on the f7 square, and would you capture my bishop? It's for you, because if you dare to capture it, I can capture the pawn on f4, attacking the queen, after the queen moves, knight to c3 happened in the game. Therefore, my knight gains the e4 square after the bishop check, king moves, black might play d5, but that's not advisable because knight takes d5 can arrive, if you dare to capture the knight, I will capture it with a check and win the rook, also, you can see that my rook has an open file, your king is exposed, and this position will be just over for you. The rook can also go to the e-file. Therefore, going back to the position, black cannot consider f6, that's the reason we have a bishop check, and after king moves, we have c6. Now, before moving the bishop, let me consider e5, gaining a tempo on the queen, I showed you the variation behind queen takes e5, after which I can sacrifice my bishop on the f7 square, capturing the bishop would be a very bad choice, that's why after the king moves to d8, I would consider bishop takes f4, gaining access to this file, after a capture on g3 happened on the board, you may see that the rook is hanging there, let me capture the rook because stockfish is very generous. Giving up all its material, I can check with the bishop, and after the king moves, queen to e1 check will arrive, exposing the king, there will be a checkmate in 5 moves, the king will need to hide, the game will end in checkmate soon. So, let me share a motivational quote in sudden with you. 
The only thing standing between you and your goal is the bullshit story you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. Returning to the variation, we discovered that capturing the pawn on e5 is still not possible, therefore, after the queen moves, a few moves later, you can see that Wesley immediately considered a5 but a5 is a very bad choice, do you know why? By playing a5, and by the way, don't forget this is blitz chess, we both have a 3 minute clock to make our moves, Wesley mistakenly played this move, his opponents often play mistaken moves, so I captured the pawn on b5, as happened in the game, the pawn is pinned, and I can win your rook, my knight possesses the dark squares, leading to potential checks, after the bishop captured to protect these squares, I captured the pawn on f4, attacking the bishop. Even if black dares to consider f6 to protect the bishop, you can exchange bishops, and after knight f4, I will win the rook, that position will be just winning for me. Going back to the position here, Wesley didn't consider f6 because he is not a careless player, he's powerful and decided to capture the bishop on f4, after capturing, you can see how black can protect and defend his position, even king to d8 is not possible because my queen can go to c7, giving a check, the knight can go there, and the bishop and rook join in attacking the pawn on f7 square, the king also cannot go there, the knight cannot move to f6 either because the rook is on e1. It's on the way to attack both your queen and king simultaneously, that's why Wesley saw he made a very big mistake by capturing the knight early in the game, he needs to capture another knight on b5, after rook to e1 comes on the board, I give a check, capture the queen, and win it, I need to win one more material to defeat Wesley. In this position, the rook is just trapped there, with no square to go, a few moves later, I capture the rook, and in a few more moves, I push forward my pawns, this position is completely winning for me, Wesley so cannot do anything, here he resigned the game because he had no other choice, that's why I played knight to h7, and in a few moves, I captured the knight, promoted it to a new queen, and checkmated him, I hope this game with Wesley so was marvelous, I hope you enjoyed the game very much, if so. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best bye bye, take care, and see you soon.